So in the last episode, we, I talked about making a kruspörskräm in Swedish. And we said stickleberry, but it's gooseberry. And directly translated, it's uh, gooseberry cream, but uh, it doesn't add up really. I also read the word gooseberry fool, someone called it, in the UK, I think. So basically, it's just a gooseberry and sugar and some starch and to make it thick, and then you eat it with the cold, not whipped cream. The milk, milk cream. <laughs> so this is another English or Swedish word that there is no English translation for? Or I haven't found, find, mm. found the good one, the mm. right one. Okay, so we will provide the recipe and uh, then people can <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Say what's the name of for this? Yeah. The sword of recipe because I don't have any uh, yeah, yeah, measurements. Okay. <laughs> but you have the gooseberry and you add water uh, so it's just below the content. You can also. It's the same uh, recipe for like rhubarb or any other berry cream. Well, you make so, and now we're just gonna boil it until the berries are real um, mushy, and then we're gonna add the starch and the sugar, uh, and let it thicken, and then put it cold, and then you can eat it. How much starch and how much sugar? Yeah, sugar. How sweet do you want it? And the starch. How thick do you want it? Yeah, how thick do you want it? So. Uh, usually they use uh, potato starch. Is that a potato starch? Mm. Yeah. But I only have the corn starch right now, so I'm using that. Mm. Organic. I, organic, yeah. And I have to use a little bit more of the corn starch I, 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 than the potato yeah. starch. So maybe three or four uh, tablespoons of starch for to this. That. Mm. To this. Yeah, and also I will add the star anise uh, for some extra flavor. When I make the rhubarb one, I usually have the cinnamon uh, sticks that I put into it. Let it start to simmer for a while until they're mushy and then I add sugar and then the starch. En lägg och bit. Vad är det för lägg och bit? Ja, vi måste diska dem. De var lite dammiga. When I use the potato starch, I can just put it directly into the berries. But when I use the corn starch, I need to have it in some water in beforehand, or else it will be a lot of lumps. Start with three tablespoons and 
If I need to add more, I add more. Oh, it's like Today we are going to make a roast beef. I don't know what this cut is in English, but roast beef it's in Swedish. And I'm going to try to remember how one tied it in a good way. <laughs> so it becomes a little bit more uniform. It's a little bit uh, flat. We're going to cook it in the oven. So. I have no idea how I did that. So over it. So I can show it. Yeah. I can share. Det är ett fint paket här av kött. So now we're just gonna put some spices on the meat, fry it in a hot pan and then put it in the oven. So I have just picked salt, black pepper, uh, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder and uh, parsley. And of course, we fry it in butter, a lot of butter. Now we have inserted the thermometer and we have put it at 58 degrees in the middle Celsius. We strive for like 100 to 130 degrees in the oven, but it's a wood stove, so it can be much higher or much lower, so <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> predict. Now it's uh, 140. So now the gooseberries are simmering and I'm going to let them do that for a little while just to mush the berries. What are we going to eat to the meat? Potatoes. Yes. I think just boiled to pay potatoes. Potatoes. Or do you want something else? Mm, it's okay. Or should we raw fry potatoes? Maybe? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm and some cold sauce, creme fraiche. After we put in the starch, let it boil or simmer. Let it simmer for a little bit. Ivar. Jag bara busa. Det är bra du busa. Men låt mamma prata lite så ska vi busa sen. After you added the starch, let it simmer for a bit to let the starch really sink in or 
Yeah, so it so it hasn't any taste of the starch that you're, you're using. Fairly pleased with the taste and the thickness. So I'm just going to put it uh, beside the stove and let it uh, cool down. It will also thicken a bit when cold. So the roast is now 58 degrees Celsius inside and I just took it out of the oven. We went for the sauna that we didn't have time for yesterday and <laughs> barely today as well but yeah well. I'm now gonna quickly wrap this up and it can rest and then I'm going to go get some more lulu in the sauna. Så det finns ju 35 och 60 tror jag på farmarskruv. Bara pappa! Jag har ökvatt den som du smakar av. Den får det här och så där och dit och hit och överallt får det. Hit och dit får tåget. Hit och dit och hit och dit och överallt och hit. Fast han har runt i benen. Men inte gå. Bara hoppa. Är vi mörker? Inte så farligt. Kan du ha att den fruktnar? Nu kan du lära dig du också. Kyckling ko. Vad är det då för något? Lödpenna. En liten lödpenna. Väldigt bra. Man kan köra på 12 volt. Är du klar att lada? Ja. Nu sitter det fast. Vad är det? Ja, det här är shrink tube. Varför krymper de då? Krymper de? Vad blev det? Vad var det? Det här var en kris. En gro. Vad är det? En grisko. Vad är en grisko? Grisko. Titta nu! 
fastnats. Alla delar. För att vrida den till ljuda. Varför då då? Om vi ska testa den här som jag har lett nu då. Tror du den funkar? Jag blir lite trött nu. Det kan jag. Det ska jag göra. Funkar. No. It has been raining the whole morning and me and Ivar has been building train tracks and uh, I started to fix this connection. It's a weird kind of connection that I I'm not sure where this is used. <laughs> it took me a while to understand which one was plus and minus uh, inside here as well. But the Bluetti power station have have one of these and so I want to use this for giving electricity to the incandescent lights we have. I got some old time incandescent real uh, burning electrical lights for a 12 volt system. They are taking more power than LED lights for sure but not that much and we very seldom use it as well so so the power consumption is not that big of a problem one of the reasons we want real burning lights is that when you are filming the light the quality of light is much better than some cheap led but another reason is also a health aspect real burning light is always going to be much more healthy than than artificial LED lights. That's at least my conviction. <laughs> I have not looked into it that much so I can validate this statement. And this is an easy solution. I can choose one or the other. Then I'm of course gonna choose the one that is closer to what natural light is. What is that for now? Ah, the XT60 connectors. What for the No, the is not smidiga connectors som jag lärde mig att använda när vi byggde flygmaskinerna. De passar inte. Men de här två passar. Vad hände? De passar in i varandra. Varför då då? Mm. Nu stänger vi. <laughs> Ska vi köra de här bilarna? Ja, yep, det kommer. Så so now I'm gonna solder some XT60 connectors to, to these cables. The rain has stopped now and I uh. think we're going to go outside for a while. Eeyore wants to play with the train track so we'll do that for a while. Nu kör den här upp! Kör den upp den där. Nu kör vi upp på den här
Đây là rèn In case this is the first video you are watching, this is a portable chicken coop that I'm working on. I'm trying to balance it now or figure out how how I'm going to continue. So this is the part where the chickens are going to be and there is the the nests where they're going to lay eggs. And on top of the nests there is a compartment here where where the chickens don't have access. I, I only got two roosts here now, but I got place for five of them. In this compartment where, where they don't have access, I was thinking about having the battery for the flexi-net that I'm gonna have around this. And also eventually for an automatic uh, door opener. I have not attached this whole house to the axle yet so I can choose where I can have the axle so that I can balance it. I can open the hand. Yes, so clear the off there without the blood. That was good. I would need the whole construction to be a little bit front heavy and this is the front so that when the chickens are sitting on the roosts here it will not uh, flip itself up or how to say in case all the chickens decide to sit on this side and with this construction here it's a little bit back heavy and you can see here that I cannot I cannot move the the axle further back only maybe two centimeters or something so as I said I would like to have a battery here and that is kind of heavy but I would also but I could put the solar panel on this side of the roof and I need a water solution so my plan is to have a, a 30 liter bucket here on the outside but the problem is I need to balance this whole thing with the bucket empty the best would be if I got the water on the axle but then it's in the way but since it's not really ready yet I'm not really sure how it will behave there is a couple of pieces left that I need to do and for example here in the front I'm gonna have a, an adjustable leg so that if it's standing in a hill I can still have it straight so that the chickens can sit on the roosts straight. That's one of the reasons I wanted only one axle with two wheels not four wheels. And I'm also gonna build some kind of uh, handlebar here so you can easily move it around. So there's going to be some more weight in front here. I don't know if that's enough to counter the battery weight in the back. I think one thing that we are going to try to do is turn the whole thing around so this uh, compartment will be in the front instead and see how that feels. Now the question is, does this work or is there something weird with it? Is it something happening? It should work, I guess. Then we should have uh, the battery here. Then the water question becomes an issue instead. I would like to have the water here in the middle. But then all the poop is going to come on top of that. Mm, det går inte. And you have to build it in somehow. Well, it seems to work this way as well. I'm not sure how I'm, how I'm going to solve the water situation. My initial plan was to have the water on top of this... Uh, uh, I'm not sure what to call this. <laughs> In English. I guess I could call it arm. On top of this arm, on the outside, close to the wall. Your knee bag. There must be a knee bag. 
egg. Ja, det får in och där. Now we can collect eggs here in the front instead of in the back. So I guess that's no difference. I don't think I can see any negative aspects of that. And all the heavy stuff can be in front here, so I have more room to adjust the position of the axle here. Varför rinner du ner i min pöl? Jag vill lägga ett litet lik där. Varför I guess I can figure out some way to have the water solution inside this compartment as well, inside here. The only problem I can think of is that when you're going to fill this water bucket, it's a little bit annoying to have to lift the water up so high. So I guess I need to find some solution for that. I guess I just have to try and see and start using it and see what works. If the axle is here, and uh, 20 or so chickens are sitting on this side of the axle and our chickens weigh roughly 1.3 kilos each so then it's 26 kilos that can be on this side of the axle so i'm gonna put some weights there and see how how it feels I guess it's hard to know exactly where all the weight is going to be. I have tried to distribute the weight here. <laughs> to simulate the chickens uh, the amount of the amount the weight of the chickens on the on the roosts the problem is i don't have a battery here and i don't know what kind of battery if i'm only going to have like a motorcycle battery or a smaller one what kind of weight I, am i going to have here as you can see now uh, <laughs> It seems to be very even. <laughs> I need this to be a little bit front heavy. So I guess I need to move the wheels back a little bit. But I guess I need to build everything in a way so that I can move the wheels when it is ready and when the chickens are there. <laughs> then I will know for sure where I want them. But I think I will try to do it this way with the with the nests in the front So today I'm making rhubarb cordial or juice or I'm not sure what the English term is but it's um, boiled rhubarb uh, with some water and then you strain the rhubarb and add lemon and sugar and when you use it you just put a little bit in a glass and then fill it up with water so it's uh, a bit stronger so you need to top it up with water so the recipe is really easy just chop up about one kilo of uh, rhubarb, put it in a pot and then add one and a half liters with water. Uh, let it boil without stirring for about 15 minutes, then strain it. Uh, put it back in the pot and add four and a half deciliters of sugar 
and the juice from one lemon. And uh, yeah, boil it up once more and let the sugar uh, melt. And then you let it cool and put it in a flask or what you now want to keep it in. And I'm also gonna add some cinnamon rolls or cinnamon bark into the boiling water just to get some extra flavor. We don't eat that much sugar here normally, but I also want to preserve this juice or what I'm now calling it, cordial, down in the cellar. So it also needs to be quite sugary. So I changed the recipe a bit and added a little bit more sugar, just to be on the safe side. Uh, read some more, read some other recipes also. So I'm trying out to have around 500 grams of sugar per liter of uh, cordial. And hopefully that will be enough to preserve it in the cellar without molding so quickly. It tastes good, really sour, and you can really feel the star anise seed uh, taste. So it was okay, but not my favorite. I think I like the rhubarb uh, cream, or what we now are going to call it better. Could you make a mix? Yeah. Of course. Mostly rhubarb and yeah. a little bit of... Yeah. And often when I do the rhubarb I take some blueberries or something to make the color a little bit more vibrant. Mm. So, I so guess... What was the name of these berries? Gooseberries. Gooseberries. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but not the best I have made. What about... Uh, Soft. The cordial or juice or it was good. It's very sweet of course. Mm. But it is a nice taste. Next time, mix the rhubarb and the gooseberry. Mm, I think so. But it's nice with sour, sour taste. As usual, these videos would not be possible without the help of all our patrons. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. The garden is at its best right now. It's so nice just walking around in there and enjoying the fruits of work. <laughs> I have probably like six vases with flowers inside now. <laughs> so beautiful. Best time of the year. It's so much fun to make stuff of everything that grows now. Like the uh, lemonade or cordial. cordial. Uh, and the... Uh, I forgot the name for the pudding. No, not the pudding. Pen. I saw them there. We got some names for 
for the thing. The thick uh, uh, cream. <laughs> My god, how annoying. In the comments. Yeah. I had it and mm. then I lost it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's fun anyway to be in the kitchen. <laughs> Every now and then we get questions about the windows that we ordered and <laughs> yeah. we, the last thing we heard was in May? May, in the end of May. Yeah. Now he, we're starting with your windows. Uh, yeah, yes. so he's, he sent some pictures about of the... Some examples how the profile would look. Yeah, yeah, and also of the wood. Yeah. haven't heard since no. so I don't know I'm not I'm I'm annoyed but at the same time I don't really care because we couldn't even put the windows in right right now, now. No. we need to get the insulation in the floor ready I think mm. before we start with the windows so, so we don't break the yeah. windows before <laughs> we have even started yeah. but it's still a bit annoying I think that they don't uh, talk to us yeah. or anything so yeah. every like third month i send them a mail <laughs> how it's going mm. i guess we need to send them again yeah and then every now and then we also get comments like or how to say uh, people pointing fingers at us that we need to do this or that or tell us what to do all the time I guess these people have not really understood what we are doing here. <laughs> I mean, we are living a very good life with very nice food and and a very nice family and and uh, it's the journey. Yeah, we're trying to make every day matter. And uh, we're already living How we want to live. The house is a bonus. Yes, and everything we are doing from now on just makes life easier, I guess. Or, of course, we are looking forward to be sitting here and in front of the fire and mm. read a good book. Yeah, it's gonna be real nice. Nah. But the thing is, I, I'm not sure where these people, what kind of life they are living, because we are doing everything here by ourselves, with the help of your family and, and my family sometimes, and with the funds that we get, mostly from making these videos and our dear patrons. I guess I get annoyed by those comments, but... Uh, I know I shouldn't let them get to be I'm <laughs> always when somebody tells me what to do I want to do the exact opposite I know <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah yeah so obstinate mm. <laughs> I guess that's something I should work on mm-hmm <laughs> think <laughs> yeah. uh, th that was the only thing I learned in school I guess don't do what you're told yeah. <laughs> mm. I guess that's it for this episode thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one